Welcome to Action Game Replay's big interview and this week we're delighted to be joined by Wildstone FC manager Gordon Bartlett. How are you today, Gordon? I'm fine, thanks, James. Excellent. And uh, a big game against current Ryman Premier League leaders Villa Ricky tomorrow, who will come and visit you down at uh, Grosvenor Park. Um, how have preparations been going for that this week? Um, obviously, on the back of last weekend, there's been a lot of euphoria around the club, but uh, I suppose it was back down to reality on today. We played AFC Hayes in the uh, County Cup quarter final, which we managed to win 2 0. So, um, two semi finals to look forward to, which are Tuesday and the following Saturday. And uh, the prelude to that is obviously you're playing the league leaders. So, massive week, really. Um, but not a great deal done regarding Villa Ricky so far. I think it's been a case of, sort of last night was a relatively re relaxing night because. Um, I think that's fair play. Um, we'll come on to your cup exploits in, in a moment, but uh, you've lost the services of winger Brit Asombalonga, um, who was on loan from Watford since November, scored 11 goals in his time with you. Uh, will we be missed? Well, I mean, our response so far has been beating Dartford, uh, winning, I think, one league game since then, um, beat Cambridge and then beat AFC Hayes the other night. So, um, all wins. So I suppose the answer's got to be no. Um, but in fairness, I mean, Brett done ever so well for us. But, you know, Peter Dean, who was the one that was sort of left out the side, he's come back and he's come back very well. So, um, you know, opportunities arise when people are either injured, suspended or, or leave. And it's up to people to sort of step up to the plate. And people certainly done that. Yeah, that's that's fair play. I mean, did you try and keep Brit? Because it looks like he's gone back out on loan again. I, one would have thought that he'd want to stay in the camp and maybe try and you know get to the uh, the FA Trophy, trophy final with you guys, etc. Well, I think in fairness to Watford, they said all along that they want their boys to play at the highest level possible. Um, Brit's come in and, and done particularly well. There was interest from uh, a conference and I think Division Two side, but. Um, He's decided, or sorry, the club decided that it was in his best interest to go and play regular conference football at Braintree, and we respect that decision. Um, if he hadn't done so well, I'm sure he would have probably stayed put for a little bit longer. But he still he texts me virtually every day. Uh, we've had a couple of communications, you know, a couple of chats on the phone, and he came over to the Dartford replay, so I think uh, his heart might still be with us anyway. That's, that's really good to hear. That's really good. Well, as we've uh, kind of alluded to, the name Wildstone's become synonymous with uh, the cup competitions this season. And firstly, AGR congratulates you and the playing staff and the backroom staff for making it through to the semi-finals of the FA Trophy. Well done. Many thanks. And uh, what was the atmosphere like in the camp travelling up to the Cambridge uh, game for the quarterfinals? Very relaxed. Possibly um, a little bit too relaxed. Um, the thing is, we've gone into these games, you know, Barrow, Dartford and Cambridge as massive underdogs. And we will do in the semi-final against people. So, you know, I don't feel there's any pressure on us. And that's exactly the way the lads felt. We didn't have a great deal of time to prepare for Cambridge. So it was a case of, you know, picking a few brains and a few phone calls. I mean, Alan Devonshire uh, gave us a DVD of when they played them you know, probably about a month ago. All little bits and pieces, we didn't sort of push too much information into the players. It was just sort of main points. And um, I think it paid dividends because there's no doubt you get to this stage of a competition and the lads would love to play at Wembley. We realise we're underdogs, but there's a desire there. And the spirit we've got within the camp at the moment is very, very positive. And that word believe has been banding around quite some time you know, over the last few weeks and it's paying dividends and we'll stick to that sort of philosophy. We think we've got a good side. I think it's two defeats in 32 games now. Um, they've got every right to believe they're not bad. Absolutely. I mean, uh, obviously, we, we recognise it's a team effort, but uh, that man, Richard Jolly, he's uh, he scored in every single round of the FA Trophy so far this season and got both the goals at Cambridge. Uh, could the word talisman be... Uh, not too strong an accolade for him? No, it's not too strong an accolade, but I, I think you're right in saying it, and Joel's will be the first one to, to say, you know, if, if, if people can't give him the ball, he's not going to score goals. 
And if we're not defending properly, and like Jonathan in goal saving, you know, chances and opportunities that come the opposition's way, you know, he wouldn't be a hero. He might have scored a few goals, but you've got to do it at both ends of the park, and somebody in the middle has got to do their fair share in, you know, providing that shield in front of the back four, or you know, giving Joel's opportunities. So it's very much, you know, teamwork, and uh, the people I would really talk about at the present time. Has also got to be, well, I was going to say defence, that's not fair. The team and the way we've defended, because we've been under the caution, certainly the Dartford game and spells during the game against Cambridge, and we held firm, you know. Um, Dartford at home, we had, was it 25 minutes with nine men, and we still didn't concede. Saturday at Dartford, we only conceded one, so always, you're always going to get the goal scorer getting the accolades and quite rightly so, I mean his record is phenomenal but uh, team ethic um, and I think I would virtually say club ethic actually because you put it down there are so many people involved I think they're quite unique in as much that um, Saturday you know that win wasn't about the players, individual players it wasn't about the chairman, the manager it was the management, the board the fans, the whole backroom staff and people that clean the changing rooms and everything else. That was a great moment for us to sort of achieve something together where we were well and truly underdogs. And, yeah, Joel's just got the two goals and he will always get the plaudits. But I think he'll be the first to recognise there was a lot of other people that went into that. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, huge congratulations again to, to all involved. Um, but for those that didn't know, you just alluded to the fact that in the fourth round of the trophy, Willstone played the last 20, 25 minutes or so uh, against Dartford with uh, only nine men following two red cards. Now, can you tell me what went through your mind, um, particularly when you saw that second red card being brandished by the ref? Anger and frustration came to mind straight away. And that was probably due to the situation. You know, there we were, we were... We were one nil up, but we were uh, backs against the wall. And uh, you obviously feel down to nine men, your, your chances of you know keeping a clean sheet and keeping them at bay would be limited because I'd seen Dartford and um, by anybody I'd spoken to were all saying they're the best side we've played this year. So 25 minutes with nine men, yeah, I had a lot of negative thoughts going through my mind, no doubt about it. But... Uh, the lads have um, and I'll take my hat off to them for what they achieved that, off that evening. Excellent. And you, as you say, through to the semi-finals now and uh, Newport County await for the two-legged uh, tie. How are you going to prepare for this game? Well, first of all, we're going to get tomorrow out of the way against Billericay, obviously top of the league. So that's not going to be easy. Then we're going to look at Tuesday night. Uh, we've got the semi-final with the County Cup. And then we'll start looking at... Um, obviously Newport. I suppose the good news is we're away first leg and then we've got to make some decisions how we how we approach that. Um, you know, do we approach it differently because it's a two legged affair? But I'm being totally honest here, all I've done I've put a few uh, a few wheels in motion to try and get a bit of information about them. Um, spoken to a couple of other managers but nothing will be really, you know, put into practice until after Tuesday night. Then we've got a chance to focus on, you know, the semi-final or the trophy. Yeah, I, th I think that's fair. I think the fans will be pleased to know that you've, you've like you say, you've got some uh, wheels going in motion there to at least start getting some prep. But it is a huge game against Billericay tomorrow, uh, and then you say another semi-final. But the the semi-final in the FA Trophy is being played over two legs, and the second of which you've already mentioned will be at home for you. Um, now I've done my research, and all your victories in the FA Trophy this season have come at home. So is that a little crumb of comfort? Because if you get a good result at Newport you know, maybe the omens will be on your side. I'd like to think so. Um, you know, you can look at statistics and everything else and you can try and find the, the, the right formulas and how to play things, but at the end of the day, this is a totally new game. Um, it's a different situation, obviously, over to... Um, you know, I... Fortunately, been to Wembley a couple of times myself and the two semi-finals that uh, I played, they were both in the Vars. On neither occasion did we win the first game, but we won the second. And uh, if we can come away from Newport, 
still in the tie. It gives us a wonderful opportunity if we can get back to Guy Vervale. And I don't know if you know this, but to, just to uh, move on from that one as well, apparently Wildstone have played at Wembley three times in its history and they've always won. Is that right? I'd like to get there first and then tell me that one. <laughs> Not to jinx it or anything, Gordon, but I thought that was a nice little uh, nice little bit of information. But uh, like you say, you're also in the uh, the Middlesex uh, Senior Cup semi-final as well. Um, but I mean, has that just been kind of a case of, you know, every time a, a, one of those ties has come along, you sort of took it seriously and, and played the game and eventually won? Or is it something you've been taking seriously this season? We've used it as an opportunity to sort of keep the squad ticking over, no doubt about it, but I'm still taking it very seriously. I don't think you can ever say we put a weakened side out. Um, all it is, the lads that maybe have been sub on the Saturday uh, get an opportunity on the Tuesday night playing in the County Cup. Um, I don't think we'll sort of won it since they won the FA Trophy. So to be in the semi-final of both competitions is another little moment. I don't know. You know, but we're still there. Um, we'll have another goal is tonight if we can get to the final. That again might be uh, good news for the trophy on Saturday. Absolutely. And just finally, Gordon, with all these uh, cup games in the fixture list, some people might look at that from the outside, not really keep up to date, but think, oh, that must have been the expense of uh, some league form, possibly. But not a jot, it seems. that You know, only one defeat in your last eight, including four wins. What's your secret? Um, well, you've got to have a little bit of good fortune along the way. There's no doubt about it. But I will come back to that word belief. I think the start of the season, I, for one, believe we were good enough to be there and thereabouts this year. We had a few dodgy performances, which in turn gave us dodgy results. And there was an air of despondency around the place, no doubt. Um, but the good news is that sometimes helps you, you learn from those disappointments. And certainly mentally, it makes a big, big difference. And I think we've become mentally stronger because of those defeats. We kept harping on about it. You know, the harder you work, the luckier you get all that and uh, we've told the players they've got to buy into the team ethic um, or the squad ethic you know there would be changes to certain games and I think they've actually learned from those experiences and consequently here we are now at the beginning of March still involved in three competitions with a realistic chance of being successful well I'll tell you what at the moment you must class that as a good season if you spoke to me in October, it was probably a disastrous season. All I hope now is that you speak to me at the beginning of May and I say it's been an absolutely fantastic season. So I still live in hope. We're still punching now way above weight, but we're still there. Absolutely. Uh, do, do you think the playoffs are still a possibility, perhaps? Yes. Um, my only concern at the present time is obviously doing well in the trophy uh, you get to the semi-final stage if you win it then all focus will then go on Wembley if you lose it there's going to be a lot of despondency around the place so it's up to us to manage the players minds more than anything else in the best way we possibly can because there's, there's, there's elation or disappointment and I'll tell you what they certainly affect our league four, or our league performances, I should say. And we've still got, what's that, 15 league games to go, I believe it is. Well, that's a hell of a lot, considering we've got two cup semi-finals as well. Um, so it could be a bit of tired legs, but I'll tell you what, we're still going, and that, that really should be number one priority, because we would like to be playing at a higher level if we possibly can next year. Fantastic. Well, Gordon, listen, thank you very much for joining us. And um, I'm really pleased that we managed to get you because a little birdie told me that your mobile melted down after the uh, the victory against Dartford. So we're really happy to get you on the line. Uh, you, you're talking to me. I think you're the first people I've spoken to on a brand new phone. So uh, I hope this one doesn't go into meltdown, I can assure you. Fantastic. Well, Gordon, thanks a lot. And uh, best of luck for the, uh, the semi-final, uh, the two legs, and uh, wish you well for the future. No problem. Cheers. Thanks a lot, James.